When you start doing this, you'll notice that your body will start to feel more energized and it will feel more energized more quickly. Enjoy this practice. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. You'll actually start to notice this mechanism kicking in each day. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Most people, I believe, wake up sometime between 6.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. But regardless of when you wake up in the morning, one of the first things that happens is that your body temperature is increasing. And that's just going to happen naturally. That increase in body temperature, in turn, causes an increase in the release of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is often discussed as a stress hormone, but it's not just associated with stress. It also enhances your immune system, provided Cortisol is elevated at the right times, and the right time for cortisol to be elevated is when you first wake up in the morning. That increase in cortisol is also going to increase metabolism. It's also going to increase your ability to focus mentally and for you to move your body. One way that you can ensure that that cortisol peak occurs early in the day, right about the time that you wake up, is to view bright light, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. That's right. View bright sunlight within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. The reason for that is very simple. You want to trigger that cortisol increase to occur very early in your day. And you don't want that cortisol peak to happen later, which is what will happen if you wait to get outside and see sunlight. The reason for this is that you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in your eye. They're called intrinsically photosensitive melanopsin cells, but you do not need to know that name. Those neurons respond best to bright light and especially right after waking early in the day, they are best able to signal to a set of neurons that reside over the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is a cluster of neurons that then sends a huge number of other signals, electrical and chemical out to your entire body that triggers that cortisol increase, provides a wake-up signal for your brain and body, and sets in motion a timer for you to fall asleep later that night. Here's what you do, or at least here's what I do. I wake up in the morning and I want to reach for my phone, but I know that even if I were to crank up the brightness on that phone screen, it's not bright enough to trigger that cortisol spike and for me to be at my most alert and focused throughout the day and to optimize my sleep at night. So what I do is I get out of bed and I go outside. And if it's a bright, clear day and the sun is low in the sky or the sun is you know starting to get overhead, what we call low solar angle, then I know I'm getting outside at the right time. If there's cloud cover and I can't see the sun, I also know I'm doing a good thing because it turns out, especially on cloudy days, you want to get outside and get as much light energy or photons in your eyes. But let's say it's a very clear day and I can see where the sun is. I do not need to stare directly into the sun. If it's very low in the sky, I might do that because it's not going to be very painful to my eyes. However, if the sun is a little bit brighter and a little bit higher in the sky, sometimes it can be painful to look at. So the way to get this sunlight viewing early in the day is to look toward the sun. If it's too bright to look at directly, Well, then don't do that. You just look toward it, but not directly at it. It's absolutely fine to blink. In fact, I encourage you to blink whenever you feel the impulse to blink. Never look at any light, sunlight or otherwise, that's so bright that it's painful to look at because you can damage your eyes. But for this morning sunlight viewing, it's best to not wear sunglasses. That's right, to not wear sunglasses, at least for this morning sunlight viewing. It is absolutely fine to wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, so-called corrective lenses. In fact, those will serve you well in this practice or this tool because they will focus the light onto your neural retina and onto those melanopsin intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. If your eyeglasses or contact lenses have UV protection, that's okay. There's so many different wavelengths of light coming from the sun and they are bright enough that they will trigger the mechanisms that you want triggered at this early time of day. So try and get outside, ideally within the first five minutes of waking, or maybe it's 15 minutes, but certainly within the first hour after waking. I want to share with you three critical things about this tool of morning sunlight viewing. First of all, this is not some woo biology thing. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quality peer-reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day 
is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Second of all, if you wake up before the sun is out, you can and probably should flip on artificial lights in your internal home environment or apartment or wherever you happen to live if your goal is to be awake. If you wake up at four in the morning and you need to be awake, well then turn on artificial lights. Once the sun is out, however, once the sun has risen, then you still want to get outside and view sunlight. Some of you will wake up before the sun comes out and if you're asking whether or not turning on artificial lights can replace sunlight at those hours, unfortunately, the answer is no. Unless you have a very special light, we'll talk about what kind of light, the bright artificial lights in your home environment are not, I repeat, are not going to be sufficiently bright to turn on the cortisol mechanism and the other wake-up mechanisms that you need early in the day. The diabolical twist, however, is that those lights in your home or apartment or even on your phone are bright enough to disrupt your sleep if you look at them too late at night or in the middle of the night. So there's this asymmetry in our retinal, our eye biology and in our brain's biology, whereby early in the day, right around waking, you need a lot of light, a lot of photons, a lot of light energy. And artificial lights generally just won't accomplish what you need them to accomplish. But at night, even a little bit of artificial light can really mess up your so-called circadian, your 24-hour clocks and all these mechanisms that we're talking about. So if you wake up before the sun is out and it's still dark, please turn on as many bright artificial lights as you possibly can or need, but then get outside once the sun is out. On cloudy days, you especially need to get outside. I repeat, on cloudy days, overcast days, you especially need to get outside and get sunlight. You just need to get more of it. Now, how much light and how much light viewing do you need? This is going to vary depending on person and place, literally where you live on earth, whether or not there's a lot of tree cover, whether or not you're somebody who has sensitive eyes or less sensitive eyes. It's really impossible for me to give an absolute prescriptive, but we can give some general guidelines. In general, on a clear day, meaning no cloud cover or minimal cloud cover, you want to get this sunlight exposure to your eyes for about five minutes or so. Could be three minutes one day, could be seven minutes the next day about five minutes. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Another key thing is do not forget about just don't try and get this sunlight exposure through a windshield of a car or a window whether or not it's tinted or otherwise it takes far too long it's simply not going to trigger the relevant mechanisms you would be standing there all day trying to get enough light into your eyes from the morning sunlight and by then the sun will have already moved from low solar angle to overhead and it simply won't work for all sorts of mechanisms related to your circadian rhythm functions so just don't try and do it through a windshield sunglasses or a window it's just not going to work get outside if the weather is really bad or for whatever reason safety reasons you cannot get outside well then i suppose try and get near a window that would be the last last resort but you really want to get outside to get the sunlight exposure now if you live in a part of the world where it's extremely dark and overcast or the weather won't let you outside or you live in a cave or some other small box that does not allow any natural light into it for whatever reason well then you're going to need a replacement for that sunlight. And there are sunlight simulators or daylight simulators that you can purchase. Those are quite expensive in general. And therefore, I suggest cheaper options that work just as well because they get just as bright. Things like ring lights that are sold in order for people to take selfies and this kind of thing. A drawing LED tablet will work pretty well. I actually have one of those and I put it on my desk all morning, even though I still get outside and look at sunlight first thing in the morning. Again, also, especially, I should say, on cloudy days. But get that morning light, ideally from sunlight, and take into account all the specific points that I've given you here. And I should say, enjoy this practice. It's really nice to get outside first thing in the morning and get the sunlight. In fact, when you start doing this, you'll notice that your 
body will start to feel more energized and it will feel more energized more quickly, you'll actually start to, to notice this mechanism kicking in each day, especially if you're paying attention to your physiology. So enjoy this practice of getting outside. Yes, you can take your morning beverage outside. Yes, you can take your dog with you. In fact, animals intuitively know to get this morning sunlight. They actually seek it out at the right times of days. We human beings need to be told by podcasters and other people about the science that supports these kinds of practices. Our pets apparently do not, but get outside alone or with somebody, with your kids, with your dog. However you go about this practice, make sure you do this practice at least 80% of the days of your life.